Hi, I'm Marcia Mason, artist with Rancho Cordova Arts. Hey, we all make boo-boos while we're painting. This video is about the tools you can use to address what you're going to do about them. We all have choices when we see something in our artworks or any design that doesn't work visually. We can either hide it or we can enhance it. In this video, we're going to look at some of both of those approaches. So let's talk about hiding it. So let's say we make a blossom that we want to remove. Now what is a blossom? I'll just make one to show you. It's when you get a back run of pigment. Put this out of the way here. You get a back run of pigment while the paper is still wet because you have an excess of water. There we go. That is making a back run right now. If this paper were flat, and actually we could make it a little flatter. There we go. I'll just tape that edge down. Then the, wa the uh, pigment is running away from where the uh, water was set down. So we'll just let that dry. In the meantime, we've got these three dry ones. And what I'm going to do is the gentlest thing you can do, and that is I'm going to get my br brush just damp. And I'm going to move the pigment around. So let's say, let's say we take this violet one right here, and we just gently, well, I think my brush is a little wet. There we go. Just very gently pick up the paint. You can tell I'm just making little itty bitty strokes. I'm moving the paint into this area here. Now, this probably won't be perfect, but it will certainly make it so you don't have a blossom anymore. And once you don't have a blossom, you have some other options. Okay, we'll just do that, and you can see I've I've picked up the paint. I didn't add any. We haven't taken much away either. I'm just moving it around. We'll just go halfway on that one. So, so that is the gentlest thing you can do to a boo boo like a blossom is to just move the paint around a little around a little bit and it does have to be dry before you start. Now I'm going to tape off some areas that I do not want to get wet and I'm going to tape right over where I just fixed it. Oops, not you. And here. Okay. I am going to remove this paint right in here. So I have masked off the area that I don't want to get wet. And now I'm going to show you four methods of removal with successively aggressive methods. First off, we're going to start with a paper towel. You can use a tissue. That would be more gentle than this even. And we're going to use just our regular brush, round brush. I'm going to get it wet and just lift, lift. There you see a little purple there. Try a little violet there. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's do more on this one. It shows more. Okay. Uh-huh. There we go. That's lifting pretty well. And with a lot of uh, boo-boos, you can get off enough with just lifting, not really scrubbing the paper, just really being gentle, clean towel surface each time. And this works pretty well. Now, that's number one. The second type is you use a brush that's made to scrub. These, are, uh, these come in a set of three. Of course, I couldn't find the middle size, but um, they are very stiff 
it's got a rounded top and you pick the one that's the size for your job. Now sometimes I'll use an eraser shield to uh, really be precise about my scrubbing, but we don't need to do that here. Um, this is a little uh, drafting tool that you can get in an art store. So let's do a little scrubbing. I'm still going to be kind of gentle. I don't want to mess with my paper too much. Come on. There we go. I am getting some color off of there. Now if your water gets cloudy, you might want to change out your water. You don't want to be putting water that has pigment particles in it back down on your on where you're racing. That pulled that up pretty well. So we can get some of this magenta off with some a little scrubbing. Yes. Okay, and we'll go after this perylene maroon here. And yes, okay, we are having success with getting this paint off. So just take a little more. And then the third method, that's number two, little scrubber brushes. And the third method is Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. These come in bigger chunks and I just cut them off and use what I need for, for each job. There we go, just rip a little bit off. That one I've used before. So I dip it in the clear water and squeeze most of it out and then you just rub, okay, this is pretty good, and dab with the clean part of the towel. Uh, this really is magic. There we go, and a little bit here. Okay, so this is pretty good. Uh, it did, uh, with all the scrubbing and lifting of the paper, I have damaged the paper a little bit here, and we'll talk about that later. But right now, I'm going to show you the fourth method. Okay, if all else fails, removing the pigment, we are going to take the drastic measure of covering it up, and I'm using absorbent ground. It's like a gesso for watercolor. You can watercolor right over it, and I am going to paint it on, and it does make a surface, a new surface on your paper that will accept watercolor. Okay, right there. It's white. Sometimes you'll need a second coat if you've got a, a color that's showing through. But I, I like to put it on pretty light because it, uh, it does have some body, and it will make little ridges. Now there you can see the damage on the paper, just little pieces that are kind of sticking up. Okay, so those are the four methods. Dabbing a tissue or paper towel with, um, once you've wetted the boo-boo with a, a brush. Uh, second method is to use the scrubber brushes. Third is the magic eraser. And fourth is just paint over it again with an absorbent ground. Now, let's talk about watercolor paper. Ho oh, ho, look at that. Well, this is not an expensive watercolor paper. And I have lifted it with my painter's tape. So I would encourage you when you make artwork to use good paper. I don't think we would have that problem if I had used my good paper on this. Okay, just take that off. Oh, and it's doing the same here. Okay, point well taken. Uh, let's talk about watercolor paper. Because I make lots of boo-boos, I use good quality paper for my artwork. Not for this, but for my artwork. Because removing pigment and still having a decent paper surface is going to be a lot easier if I do. Now, there are two kinds of paper I'm going to talk about. You can use cold press paper. I'm going to do this in cross section. Cold press paper, if you look at the surface, it's got hills and valleys. And you can see some of the texture here where you, the pigment has settled into the little valleys. 
right through here. Okay, hot press paper on the other hand has a smooth surface. Now, uh, when you uh, start messing with the surface of this paper, it's going to show the little discrepancies in smoothness a lot more than uh, some variation on this texture would show. So this one's a little more forgiving, the cold pressed paper with little hills and valleys. Now, new watercolor paper is made of flattened fibers. I'm going to show you a cross section. It's like this, okay? We've got all these little flattened fibers. We'll make this a cold press paper. Here we go with our texture. So this is a cross section. Looking at it sideways, if we if we cut the uh, if we cut the paper here and looked at it right that way. So this is brand new watercolor paper. Now, uh, when you touch water or watercolor paint. And what is paint? It's medium with pigment in it. In acrylics and oil, you end up with a, a coating, a layer on the surface. But with watercolor, you don't get a paint layer. And what happens is these fibers thicken, I'm comparing it to this new paper here, and they get a little mixed up as you brush it so that uh, you get thickened, kind of disheveled fibers, something like a shag carpet, and then you also get a bunch of pigment sitting in here. Yes. Now, these fibers expand and they loosen. You brush on the paint, the paper strewn with pigment particles, the paint medium and the paper sizing drain into the little crevices and capillary action is carrying the medium and the sizing down into the tiny spaces between the fibers where it hardens and dries. It's not sitting up on the surface. So it is a kind of a living thing when you paint on it. Um, now, uh, if you get paint on your clothing, I mean when you get paint on your clothing, water or acrylic, or paint dries on your brushes, uh, you can use what I use. I use an oil soap. Uh, you can soak those brushes, your clothes, in this oil soap and it will take them out. We've shown you how to hide things. Let's show how to enhance things. I've done a, a quick little sketch here with a uh, a carrot kind of figure in the middle and water blossoms around. It's not really a very appealing background. Uh, plus, uh, I'd like to show some other uh, figures in there. So what I'm going to show you first is how to do negative painting over a space that's maybe too plain or too light. I think this one will work. Let's do... Let's do a little bit of that purple first. Okay, so let's say I'm going to put... I'm going to put a figure right here. And what I've done is just paint around. Paint around this figure. Well, let's put some other figures in here. I see one showing up right in here. Yes. Oops. Hello. Well, maybe we'll put a little cat here too. <laughs> well, big cat, I guess. There we go. Okay, so our surface is a little darker now, but we have some more shapes in it. And the way I've drawn them, it kind of looks like there's somebody way in the back and then there's somebody kind of close here. Let's just do that. Okay. And over here we'll put 
another person, maybe about that big. There we go. There we go. Alrighty. Now negative painting is just painting at round shapes. There. So I've made that a little darker. There we go. And I'm just going to fill in. There we go. Alrighty. The purple layer is dry now, so I'm going to take some blue and do some more negative painting so you can see what this is all about. There we go. This one's not going to be... as much of a carrot. It's going to have, be a carrot with a dress. How's that? There we go. And we just paint wherever we're not painting a figure. There we go. Very good. And let's put something right about here. Yes, right there. I think I'm going to paint right over that. We'll see what happens. That might not work too well, but we'll just try stuff. And away we go. This is our third layer of watercolor on this. The base layer is the purple and There we go. Make that a little bit. Then we had a uh, another purple layer and a blue layer. And you can see it's, this is just they're big shapes, so it's going pretty fast. Bye bye, kitty cat. There we go. I didn't like the cat so much. Okay. Hmm. I like what the blue did to the small figure in the back there. Okay. I'd be getting an, a more even wash if I had this tilted up. But it is flat, and there we go. Well, you can see we get, we're getting a number of different effects, but that is negative painting. So we've taken a uh, kind of a, a light colored plain background and made it um, quite a bit more varied and we have some figures in it. Okay, so that's negative painting. The other thing you can do with a background that's a little plain is take a stencil. I'm going to just put that right down there on the edge. And uh, I like to use um, a watercolor pencil. This is an ink tense and some uh, sandpaper. This is an uh, emery board. And just, since this is wet, I don't have to re-wet it. I'm just going to sand some particles of watercolor. Oops, there we go, right on the rest. Uh, of this pencil, watercolor pencil, onto my wet watercolor paper. Now this, because of the dominant pattern over the top, will pretty much make you pay attention to that rather than the unevenness boo-boos uh, underneath. And actually it kind of adds a little more interest. Okay, let's take a look and see what we've got here. Alrighty, so stenciling. You can also stencil over a background that's just not
cutting it. So uh, when you do these things, it's good to have a little scrap of paper. So I never throw away my little scraps of paper until I've used them to uh, judge what color I'm putting over the top of, uh, of the next thing. And that way you can kind of test to see how much the dilution of your paint to water is uh, where you want it. Now, at the start of this video, I mentioned my hide it or enhance it approach to visually unpleasing elements of our artwork. As for hiding the boo-boos, we've talked about fixing blossoms. We've talked about ways of removing pigment from gentle to aggressive. And as an alternative to removing the boo-boos, we've talked about enhancing them by either negative painting or stenciling over the top of them. We've also talked about paper. Ha ha, look at that bad paper. And the mechanics of what happens when we put paint on paper. Brand new watercolor paper and paper that has paint on it. Well, we all make boo-boos. Remember that sometimes the best choice to deal with them isn't to hide or enhance it. Sometimes it's good to just think of them as unplanned, happy accidents and let it go. I hope this video has been helpful. We encourage you to post a photo of your paintings on Rancho Cordova Arts Facebook page. Rancho Cordova Arts and I thank you for watching. Stay curious and stay creative. I'll be back with more videos, so stay tuned.